All right, so you're telling me, Dan, that they've actually removed alignment for monsters? They have. I mean, uh, like I say, there's going to be a, a very binary response to this. You're going to have people saying, oh, this is a symptomatic of wokeism, et cetera, et cetera, which may or may not be true. But for me, the real issue here mm -hmm. is in the impact it's going to have on the gameplay. It's a desensitizing of role-playing. You're basically making your monsters kind of ambiguous, um, re reducing them in threat. You're kind of taking that whole kind of conflict out of, out of RPG. Um, and I think RPGs are the best when there is a challenge, when there is competition, just as life is, to be fair. I, in my personal experience, I've always enjoyed a challenge and uh, enjoyed the facing them and learning from them, and being rewarded if I'm um, successful in facing them appropriately. Um, so, yeah, I, I just feel there's a desensitization of, uh, of the gaming world, a uh, reduction of threat um, and a challenge. And I personally, I, I, this is just me personally, I would rather be happy in a, a dungeon fighting an evil beholder intent upon killing a village than uh, prancing in some hose at Strixhaven. Did you say prancing in hose? Yeah. With, with some hose? Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure. Right, yeah. No, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, no, Strixhaven. Either way, get me out of Strixhaven. Hail, brothers. You want me to get you in or get you out? Get me out. Get yeah. you out? Are, are you stuck there? I have a feeling <laughs> Strixhaven is kind of like the interpretation of the School of Frankfurt, but like transposed potentially into the D and D universe. But that's just mm. a personal kind of theory I have. Um, but You're losing me. I'm what do you mean the School of Frankfurt? Ah, uh, the School of Frankfurt. Well, it's um, you know it seems to be the uh, origin of what people call woke theory or you know the SJW kind of politics. It was a school in Frankfurt in Germany. It seems to originate there and again pervaded most of our kind of cultural elements but uh that's by the by for me the fact is that um strict hmm. savings seem to be occupied by a whole bunch of owls frolicking and people worrying about going to proms and uh for me i'm very adventurous uh, i no, don't know kind of prom in my real life i have you know we had our own version we don't have proms as such in the uk but we have something similar and i went to that one Right. So yeah. for me, in the second art, second part of this article, it talks about how they're actually removing the concept of slavery, right? So the drow uh, traditionally are a slaver race, right? Mm -hmm. They take other races, uh, slaves, and use them for nefarious means, which makes them evil, right? Mm -hmm. And so what they're actually doing is it, when they take out lore like this, they're changing you know, the whole flavor of the universe. It turns everything very bland and everything's a gray area. Um, it actually does a disservice to characters like Dritz, right? Um, the one, the one drought who does turn out to have, you know, a kind heart and second guesses all these evil nefarious things that the race does. Um, it kind of takes away from his character, you know, when they do this stuff, it's not just, you know, can a uh, can a beholder be good? I mean, that's just unquestionable. You know, these things are designed in order to be obstacles and monsters that you have to face. Um, without the monsters, how can you ever be a hero? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just yeah. thinking, man. I mean, a, a beholder, okay, now correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I remember, it's a conjured beast from the astral plane sent specifically to guard uh, a horde. Right. And mm -hmm. um, and it's got a mental link, I think, a telepathic link. They, they communicate telepathically. Um, I, I don't know if it's to the conjurer or right? something like that. I can't remember the details. Yeah. Great to all. There's a great earth orb or elder orb. Sure. The work is kind of like a unit and uh, you'd have like kind of like a hive, I suppose, not like a hive mind, like, say, a lithid. Sure. That used to find you know, quite a lot of them, uh, particularly in under mountains. It's always quite a lot of them. But like you said, they'll guard a horde, they'll be conjured to, to maybe serve someone. Um, right. But they were, you know, I mean, how can you have a friendly, average, everyday, you know, beholder in this new d, &D? You know, this is a, a creature that really is designed to destroy. It has a death ray gaze. If one of its eyes can cast fear. Is it going to cast happiness now? Is that what they're going to try and say? You know, the, their eye's not going to disintegrate. It's going to create you know just conjure some lego bricks out somewhere something i mean what what 
is a beholder design what is inherent about it it's basically <laughs> an eye with teeth and several other eye stalks that cast devastatingly powerful magics that destroy so i don't see them popping around children's chimneys at christmas bringing <laughs> <prayer. laughs> the older claws yeah <laughs> It's really it's an odd concept because these are this is what made D and D cool to us all these original monsters and it was like if you ran into a beholder, it was a big deal you know you knew you were up against a powerful evil monster it wasn't there to have a tea party with you you know um, it had all these eyes and they all did some specific nefarious thing you know death ray and all this other stuff you know um, psionics. Um, the elephants as well. So you, you brought up mind flayers and drow and gnolls and orcs. They're also saying in this article are not inherently evil. Well, you know, this is, and that's okay. Whatever you're immediately changing the lore, which has been forever. That's the one problem. We all love canon. We love the canon of D and D, but the reason they give for this specifically is that some of these uh, things are considered racist. So, um, you know, some of the, the talk on the internet is, you know, back and forth has been, well, can someone explain to me um, how a beholder is racist, you know, or who are, you know, the, the, also the argument of, well, somewhere out of out of nowhere, people are claiming that black people are attributed to orcs. And it's like the it's the dumbest thing we've ever heard being old fantasy guys. Um, we laugh at stuff like that, but people are serious. So, yeah. Well, then people, it may be spiders because they have many eyes. I mean, who, what? who's representing the beholder people? Who, who, who yeah. is the spokesperson out there for yep. the beholder king in the real world? Or what is the, the function of that? Um, yeah. It, it's farcical. Um, but I guess by that gate, you're telling me that you are not going to go to the prom with a beholder at Strixhaven. Hey, oh, brother. Well, that might be the only way I go to the prom at Strixhaven is with the Beholder, and let's see what happens. Right? Right, everyone, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that sounds like but I mean, again, you mentioned the whole removal of slavery. Now, personally, I I have an issue with that. Um, I'm very anti-slavery. In, in previous work, I've worked with people that have unfortunately been human trafficked or experienced that, and it's a very serious issue. Um, it's a very serious issue today. It's a very serious issue yesterday, and it's a very serious issue tomorrow. Uh, slavery is an unfortunate, darker aspect of human nature. I think from the dawn of time, there's always been some part of humanity, and I mean humanity, it's non-specific to any creed or any denomination. It's humanity. Um, everybody's been at it, subjugating another bunch of humans for their own benefit and gain and, 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 and satisfaction. It's something at present. The idea of removing that from um, a, a fancy game is almost denial of reality. Um, it, because you don't have to, it's not like you're gaining the whole debate of slavery good about old bad. But slavery is bad. You know, you can fundamentally say that. But would, I, I personally in an RPG would be quite happy to play a heroic character that's freeing a group of slaves. Like that, that's a heroic adventure to me. That's a challenge. Um, why is that being taken out? Why why are we not encouraging that as an aspect of, of game of evil? Because it simply is an aspect of evil in the real world in a fantasy game. So I think again it's about desensitization. I mean, like I say, it, it won't be long before all RPGs are essentially just people prancing around in, in their homes. Um, to minstrel music, worrying about what they're going to wear. What they're going to, I'm sorry, sir, one, what they're going to uh, is cut out again. Sorry, brother. Yeah. Um, but I frankly have no interest in, in, in playing an adventure game where there is no adventure, where there is no challenge, where there is no evil to strive against. And one, as we can all agree, one of the greatest evils is, is the fact that human beings have this dark inclination to subjugate another branch of their own species. I mean, it's it, it's silly. It, it really is silly. Um, but again, this is the kind of naivety that we find ourselves in these days where, I mean, people call it the snowflake generation or what? I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to go into the ad hominems there, but for me, it, it's the denial of reality. 
Um, there are things that you do want to fight against. Fight against slavery in a fantasy setting it is definitely yeah. a compelling, compelling adventure. That's the actual problem too: is the inability to separate the two. That <clears throat> reality, the type of slavery we talk about in reality in the modern age, or even you know, 150 years ago, um, is different than what we're talking about in a fantasy setting everyone assumes it's like it's suspension of belief you're in another world um so to eliminate something like that which is to take a little bit of the ability to, to have some of this heroism saving you know some people who may be enslaved that's a common thing that occurred in every um, almost everyone who's played D has rescued a slave at some point right it's a, it's it's a normal it's thing so it's a- it's an interesting subject to cover. I mean, I know certain tropes as well have covered slavery very differently. I mean, I don't know if you guys have been fans of Doctor Who, but in the series has gone by, not the recent uh, catastrophic series, uh, but there was a um, there was a race of creatures called the Ood who kind of looked a little bit like a lithid, funnily enough. Um, and they were a slave species, but they were willingly servile. Mm. Oh, you're cutting out. They're willingly servile, yeah. Oh. It was their purpose in existence. It's what they strive to do, and they were kind. Of, and, and I kind of wonder if they would be cancelled. And it was a very interesting narrative twist on what could be perceived as sl- a slave culture or slave race. But again, it, it the whole removal of words in our culture is not something we should be doing. Hmm. Interesting thoughts with Mr. Dan Marshall and Gatori Hanzo. Look out for Runes of Adirian by Jim Ward, Dan Marshall, and Gatori Hanzo coming to a shelf near you. I can't wait. Uh, Gat, maybe a couple words about Runes of Adirian and what you've designed in the world, please, sir. Uh, well, so, you know, sticking strictly to what we were talking about in this article, this is something that Jim Ward actually had brought up at being part of the game mechanics is that there's something called subdue damage within the game itself, within its rules. He says, you know, this is something that they had back in the day that they, they took the kind of phased out over the years, but he wants to bring it back. And so subdue damage is where you can damage a monster and actually, you know, kind of take them prisoner. Right. And so, you know, the, Depending on what the mechanics are, what you can and cannot do afterwards is it's basically like you're taking a slave or you're at least taking a prisoner, right? And so uh, when you have, you know, I think this is something that's cool. It's something that's kind of like um, a little bit different than what you see in a lot of worlds because, you know, you see all this stuff creeping in. Um, it's actually creeping into game mechanics. It's not just the lore. It affects that. So, um we figured, why not? Let's go and kind of do this thing. You know, there's there's certain races and certain player character <laughs> classes to where you can perform this mechanic. Um, and yeah, I think it's cool. I think it adds a lot of flavor to the game. You know, whatever you choose to do with it is, you know, play how you want, right? Basically how we do this in the fantasy world. Um, but yeah, I think it's something that it adds a little flavor to Ruins of Adirion and other gaming systems don't have. So, I mean, that's something you can look forward to with the ruins. You know, we're trying to look at and do something different. You know, we're kind of bringing back some nostalgia. We want to bring you back to Red Box, Blue Box, and expand on it. Um, so, yeah, I think that's one of the cool things you can look forward to from Jim Ward. Can't wait. Thank you. 